I think you're like an aged white. It's white. <laughs> Hey, this is Steven. Hey guys, this is Alan. And welcome to another episode of Paint Talk. Today, we are going to be talking about what? <laughs> if you search our YouTube video, you will find a video of Alan accidentally saying why is why? <laughs> and you want to get this done in a specific why or why? Yeah. Alan is a 30 year old young man, gentleman. <laughs> and occasionally he talks like a 60 year old down south true Texan and I love There's it. nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Depends yeah. on how I didn't say there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. If you've had a little barbecue, yeah. Yeah. maybe get a Lone Star. There you go. <laughs> All of a sudden, uh, Alan's uh, talking white. White. All right, so we're talking about whites today. <laughs> this is extra white, <clears throat> which is a uh, very popular common white from Sherwin-Williams and uh, one of the ones we often do use. Um, it's also what the Sherman Williams base white is in most cans white? are, mm -hmm. is the extra white. Don't be confused, many of the other paint companies will call their base white pure white. But Sherman Williams base white is extra white, and then they add a little bit of black to it to make it the pure white. So the pure white's actually just a couple drops different mm -hmm. than the extra white. So these are two that we use a lot. And what I want to talk about a little bit is people, um, will often come to us because it's really difficult to pick whites. It is. Um, and it's really, really difficult to have any clue on whites when you're looking at a computer screen or your oh, phone yeah. screen. The first thing I'll say is do not use or trust your phone to help you pick whites. Because every not. white looks like off-white compared to a backlit LED screen. Um, Absolutely. Right, so that white that's on your computer screen uh, as the background compared to these actual real colors in real life are totally different. So don't trust your computer screen at all. And it's even more than that, it's really hard to trust <coughs> swatches because I'll be honest with you, I'm looking at a whole bunch of swatches here and they all kind of look the same. But if I get samples and I go put them on a wall where there's sunlight and natural light and there's uh, a lot different lights from different types of light bulbs, uh, all of a sudden I can see there's tons of difference mm. between all of these whites. Yeah. And so Alan, wh why don't you talk about a few of these that we use, why we use them, why we recommend them. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about the one that we hate in a minute. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll, reserve, I'll reserve that yeah, for my, sure. um, that sounds talk about good. The, my hatred for that one. Well, first off, I just want to address the, the customer who has gone white crazy. And what I mean by that is you've read some stuff online, you're going down the blog rabbit hole of all these different designers yep. telling you what white to pick, and you're literally looking That's at That's an overwhelming 40, thing that happens. Oh yeah, we, had, we get at least every one of these blog, customers Pinterest. every week who has just gone white crazy. They don't know what white to pick. They have picked all, all these different swatches. They read all these different things online. I'm going to be very honest with you. The majority of whites are minimally different and marginally uh, uh, different in the app in, in the final look of them. So my point is, is I could take a lot of these and put them on the wall and most people wouldn't even know the difference. So another thing to keep in mind, and this is one thing that I get really irritated with, with, with just designers too, because they're honestly not off very honest in the way they write their blogs and stuff, is that <clears throat> whites are a shade. So your lighting, your furniture, um, your decor will actually determine the overall look of that white even more so than the color itself. Absolutely. Because your stuff. white's gonna pick up, you're gonna feel the color yep. of your floors and almost project yep. it onto your walls. Same thing you have with grays. People go gray crazy. They don't want a gray that's too green, too blue, too lavender. Right. Um, same type of deal. If you're picking grays, you need to know that grays are shades. So white, grays, blacks are all shades. That means they will pick up the colors that are around them. In other words, they're not a true color. They're not going to dominate. They're going to pick up what's around it, and whites are prone to that. The light fixtures you have, the color of the bulbs, if you have the very blue bulbs or if you have the warmer kind of yellow bulbs, yeah. will change the way the white looks. Yeah. And so those are really important elements to keep in mind. Um, they're things that we train our estimators to talk to you about even at the time of estimate. They're things to keep in mind that obviously you do want to get the color right. I'm not saying don't get the color right, but also understand that if you're displeased with the white or the look, if you feel like it looks too blue, too sterile, too whatever, sometimes it can be, it can be a it fault. It can be the lighting of your home, the lighting, the core, your flooring. So all those other elements in your yep. home have a really big effect on the whites and grays Absolutely. when you're picking them. Mm -hmm. That's a super good point, Alan. Um, and then within some of these, like they're like Alan's saying, like uh, if you're really stressing between pure white, extra white, and snowbound, they look 
relatively close. Like, yeah. honestly, if you chose any one of those three, I would say it's, I'm going to be more concerned about what light bulbs you have in yeah, your exactly. home between those three if you're upset with the color. So, um, however, I do have some opinions on those three. Those are three of the brighter whites from Sherman Williams that we use a lot mm -hmm. are Snowbound, Pure White, and Extra White. The Extra White is just truly like basically the can of paint, untinted. Um, which is, is fine. I tend to think that especially natural light, if you don't have uh, warmer bulbs in your home, it yeah. can look a little bit blue in certain yeah. lighting. Yep. Um, that's why I like the drop of black that they put in the pure white. I feel like it neutralizes that Absolutely. in natural lighting. Honestly, the pure white and extra white look identical. They really do. Uh, you can't tell the difference at all, but there's a little bit of a difference in the natural light. And then I would say my favorite white of all time is the Snowbound. Um, it's a bright white, but it has just enough in it. Um, I believe it's a drop of it's a gold and magenta. Mm -hmm. um, and it is just a really, really pretty white that's still very bright. That's my favorite white of all time. Now, one of the things we get asked a lot is <clears throat> high reflective white. Uh, Sherwin Williams puts this out on their swatches. I wish they won it. It's also on the website. And it appears on the swatches and on the website to be the brightest white. And yeah. so people wanting the brightest white will often ask us to do high reflective white. Here's the thing. High reflective white, like extra white, is a base. It's not like I can use this in any paint. Only certain paints even come in the high reflective base. And the high reflective base is actually designed for receiving like really bright colorants. Because of that, it's a little bit translucent. Yeah. So I tell everybody like, if painting with pure white or extra white would normally be two coats or, th or three coats, this is gonna be one extra coat beyond what a normal white it doesn't coating cover would well. be. It yeah. doesn't cover because this base from Sherwin Williams is um, a little bit translucent in the use. So it actually feels like it takes a little more yeah. labor and additional coat. Yeah, so definitely. I try to get people to avoid the high reflective white except in one scenario, which is with the new Emerald Designer paint, which is their most expensive interior paint, they have a base that works in this really, really bright white. Unless you're willing to pay for the most expensive paint, that super bright white from Sherwin Williams is an option. Extra white and pure white are gonna be so close. I, yeah. I, I promise you, you're not gonna really notice the difference once it's actually on the wall. You're only gonna really notice the difference on the swatches. <laughs> on this end, we have some that are a little bit of off-whites. They're not true like full-fledged off-whites, but they're they're nice sort of slightly off-white. A little, off warmer, white. little mm -hmm. bit warmer white. Like crushed ice is a real popular one. That this a one has gray. a little bit of a grayish look to it. In fact, in certain lighting, it'll even look like a gray wall. Yep. Um, but that's a really popular one people like if they don't really want just to do a boring, just standard white on their wall, they want a little bit of something in there. Crushed, Crushed ice, ice is, is a really good one. Alabaster, mm -hmm. which if you want a little bit of a warmer white, but you're going for a bright white look, but you want a little more warmth than maybe the Snowbound or Pure White are gonna give you, the Alabaster is just slightly warmer. Mm -hmm. um, you also have the Greek the Villa. Villa. Popular for cabinets. This next one, Alan, is Soji White. This color, I honestly, I don't know what it is about this color, but it is beautiful in exteriors. I think it's the way that it picks up sunlight. So it's not a, like a real bright white. It's got a little bit of uh, more warmth to it, but it's beautiful in exteriors. Really I really feel like it is mm. one of your best choices if you want to paint the outside of your home white. Uh, the way it picks up sunlight, it's just a really, really gorgeous white. And what else we have, Alan? Uh, like natural choice. Yep. That's a pretty popular one. Um, it just kind of looks a little softer, a little warmer. It looks yeah. a little more natural. Aged white can be. This is that on the. This is this is definitely more of an off white off at this point. You know, then you can get into like the ivories and really off whites from here. Um, not quite that trendy yeah. anymore. People don't really like that old patina look. Yeah. But that's why they go. Who with knows? Natural choice. They can always come come back. You never yeah. know. <laughs> we have a couple property managers that really like the natural choice yeah. because they want their walls, ceilings, trim, and doors all one color for easy touch ups. Yep. And so the natural choice is like that nice, not too bright of a white, not too much of an off-white. Yeah. And uh, so we do use this one a ton. Yeah. Um, it's one I recommend in those kind of situations because... Yeah, it looks uh, a lot nicer than yeah, that. Yeah, if you don't want to go full, beige. like, stark Everyone white, yeah, and it's not a beige either, yeah. or like a tan or something, it's just yeah. a really nice off-white. Picking whites can be really tricky, yeah. um, not just because of the swatches, not just because of the co uh, complication of like a computer screen or the lighting. Right. One of the other things is that sometimes people are doing, let's say just the walls in their home 
and they think, well, I've got white ceilings and I've got white trim and doors and I want to pick extra white or something to do on my walls. Yeah. And we tell them all the time, I was like, I, I doubt that your ceilings and your trim and doors are as white as you think they are. Right. Um, because if until sometimes whites seem white until you put them next to <laughs> another white. Yeah. And all of a sudden that white doesn't look like a white anymore. It looks right. like off white. And so I tell everybody, put a sample next to the ceiling or next to the trim and doors. What you'll find is that your trim and doors might actually be a little bit of an off-white. And if you put that extra white or something right next to it, it's gonna look, it's gonna make your trim and doors look really dated. Yep. So you may want to A, paint your trim and doors too, or B, pick a white that'll complement what you already have. Absolutely. Um, whether that's on your ceilings or your trim and doors. Yeah. So some of these colors are good for different applications. So I'd tell you that like we really like pure white, extra white, and even snowbound for like trim and doors mm -hmm. because they're bright, they cover well, they're going to be great, true, like bright white options for trim and yeah. doors, things like that. However, I wouldn't really recommend you do pure white on a two story exterior with all hardy siding because it's really in summer, bright. at least in Texas, it's almost right? Uncomfortable it's very eyes. bright. I always joke with customers <clears> sometimes <throat> when they give me colors, I'm like, just keep in mind. You don't want to be the house that people have to put sunglasses on to look at in the summertime. We've all kind of seen a house that was a little too white, um, yep. and you can. That's do where that the snowbound. Careful. Just because I have that drop of magenta, yep. it doesn't. Trust me, it doesn't look pink or anything. Uh, it just doesn't pulls it down. It just lowers. Yeah, just it's where bit. it's a little easier to look at in the sunlight, whereas like the pure white or the extra white can be mm. kind of harsh. A quick guide too, guys, is when you are grabbing these swatches, there is something on the back. It tells you light reflective value, the LRV. Yes. Yes. That's literally how much it's going to reflect the sunlight yep. back to you. Um, just know that on an exterior, you want to be in the high 70s or low 80s. Yep. If you're in like 85 and above, um, it's reflecting 85% of that sunlight back yeah. to you as you're looking at it. And that's a lot. So especially if you're getting an area where you get a lot of direct sunlight. Yeah. So that's why a lot of the ones that we like, like he was talking about Shoji earlier, 74. is a 74. It's because yeah. it's, it's very soft. And in the summertime, it's really it easy really to look good. at in the bright mm -hmm. summers of Texas when you're looking at your exterior. Some of yep. these other whites are a little bit hard to look at. You yep. almost want to look away. Yep. And Soji white, you actually just can kind of enjoy mm -hmm. as a really beautiful white. And even some of these other ones, Snowbound and all that, they're like in the lower 80s. But once you get to like extra white, definitely yeah. high reflective, high I believe is 92 or something. Like, yeah, that was yeah, rough. 93, I apologize. Yeah. So yeah, that this is something where, yeah, it's, I mean, it's in the name, high reflective white. It reflects yeah. a lot back at you. So just understand that certain whites are better for certain yeah. scenarios. Typically, you want a brighter white on your ceilings and on your trim and doors. Yes. So in those, you're very safe doing like a pure white. And you can white, do it on your walls too if you're white. going for that yeah. look. Yeah, yeah. Um, or you can complement it, right? So. Yeah. You can actually do uh, like an extra white on trim and doors and ceiling, and then you could do like an alabaster on your mm -hmm. walls. Mm -hmm. Also, I'll tell you this: like there's a really big difference in how whites look based upon the sheen that you select. Yeah. So I've told people is like, look, we could do semi, we could do all one color, flat on the ceiling, or maybe flatter or eggshell on your walls, mm -hmm. and then a semi gloss or gloss on your trim and doors. And those three whites, even though they're the same because of the different sheens, will They'll actually look, a, look a little bit different. Absolutely. So if you've got some texture on your walls, which has a little bit of shadowing, plus you choose a flat paint, uh, that it's gonna look a little darker than the same color on your trim and doors, which are smooth and have some semi-gloss or, or a little bit of sheen to it. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll look like two different colors just simply because of the type of sheen yeah. and texture of the surface. Uh, so these are all things you wanna consider when you're picking whites. I hope this is helpful and wasn't super <laughs> confusing. We talked about a lot of whites. I feel like yeah. if you're really trying to pick a white, it is good to talk to a professional. Absolutely. Uh, whether that be a painter who actually cares about colors. <laughs> not all painters do. They, just, no. they care about application, but not necessarily yeah. colors. Mm -hmm. We care a lot about helping people with colors. But also there's interior designers who can help with this. Absolutely. Or, uh, there's yeah. people who all they do is uh, help people with their color selections too. Yep. Yep. So get some help or rewatch the video a couple times if you, if you <laughs> miss some stuff. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching and uh, we we'll hope that you'll watch another video. Uh, like this video, share yeah. it, and subscribe as well. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys.